Is there a doctor in the house? Because we need to be treated for burns from all this gaslighting. And the culprit, of course, Lord Fauci himself. But will he ever be held accountable for his role in botching the nation's, nay, the world's pandemic response? As you may know, Anthony Fauci has been at the helm of the White House COVID team since the beginning in 2020. The country has been a mess ever since. A million Americans are dead. Lockdowns destroyed lives and livelihoods. School closures ravaged the education and mental health of our kids. And the economy is still very much in tatters. But this afternoon on Fox News, Fauci claimed he didn't lock anything down. Compliance. Do you regret particularly the last one, the shutdown, the sweeping shutdown that some yeah. said made things worse? No, I, I, I don't, uh, Neil. And in fact, I think we need to make sure that your listeners understand I didn't shut down anything. There was a lot of consideration among the White House task force that we were reaching a point where the hospitals, such as in New York City and other places, were being strained to the point of practically being overwhelmed. And when Dr. Birx and I came with the proposal that we take 15 days to essentially get to the point where we slow, if not shut some things down, not completely. And the record will show, Neil, that we didn't recommend shutting everything down. Yeah, you did. Two weeks to stop the spread. My sweet arse. Last night on Maddow, he said he never flip-flopped and that his critics just don't understand all the great work he did. <laughs> With COVID, I mean, the things that we thought we knew in the beginning turned out as the months went by to not be the case. That was interpreted by many as flip-flopping or not really knowing what's going on when it really was the evolution of the science. There is a weird, obsessive, violent, sort of ongoing demonization of you by the right that is hinged on COVID. What we're dealing with now is just a, 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 a distortion of reality, making it look like trying to save lives is encroaching on people's freedom. Oh, it was encroaching on people's freedoms that destroyed their lives and then not taking any responsibility for that. Republicans and a lot of Democrats whose kids were kept out of school, whose businesses closed, they aren't buying it. Republicans vowing to drag Fauci's arse into the Capitol to answer some difficult questions. Watch. Dr. Fauci, retirement or not, is going to be spending a lot of time in front of a congressional committee and committees if Republicans take back control. He hasn't ever testified in front of the House since COVID started. So there are so many questions that, that members have. We've already told Dr. Fauci to preserve all of his documents. I hope if Republicans take control uh, that they will get to the bottom of everything from the origins of COVID to all the manifest failures of the public health establishment, particularly Dr. Anthony Fauci. And as the Wall Street Journal today suggested, uh, thanks to Fauci, Americans will never trust government health officials again. So what will his legacy be, hero or villain? Let's meet tonight's party panel. We've got Versus Media podcast host and The Spectator USA contributing editor Stephen L. Miller. La, 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 la. We've got Democrat pollster and co-host of The Five. We're twinning. It's Jessica Tarlov. <laughs> and co-founder of Based Politics and Foundation for Economic Education Policy correspondent Brad Palumbo. Uh, everyone's got lots to say. Stephen, I will start with you. My problem here is no one is immune to criticism. I don't care how long you've served in government. I don't care how important you are. Uh, anyone's job is fair game if they have made mistakes. So why does Fauci uh, keep reframing this as a character assassination? Because he's science itself. He said so. He's the spokesman for science itself. He, he said people are going to medical school because of him now. So um, any obvious criticism of that, you're, you're, you're just a science denier now. Um, he's going he's gonna to classify anything as character assassination. Uh, when, when we start trying to figure out you know, how much U.S. taxpayer money in the form of grants was filtered through uh, NAIHD over to Echo Health Alliance and Peter Dachik in Wuhan to study bats, he's going to call that character assassination. When we see private emails that contradict predict his public statements, which we have, he's going to say that's character assassination. And so um, I, I find it 
hugely kind of ironic that we've spent now two two years of congressional hearings over a single day in January two years ago, but we have a Biden administration and a Democrats in Congress who show zero curiosity about the origins of a pandemic that has killed 16 million people worldwide and locked this country down uh, for months. So if it takes Republicans to try to get to the bottom of this without too much grandstanding, I'm all for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's always going to be political grandstanding. That's all they want to do is score points. Uh, but Jessica, what is most important in all of this? It's not just Fauci. It's China. And it's also what he knew about what they were doing, how they were using the money, and what could possibly go wrong with gain-of-function research. I will grant Dr. Fauci that he's a smart person. He's been doing this for a long time. And someone that smart and that well-versed uh, in this type of research would know that once the genie is out of the bottle, it's really impossible to get a handle on things. So that's what I want to know. I want to know how far back his knowledge goes of what could possibly go wrong and, uh, you know, some of the issues in Wuhan that weren't necessarily safe. So I have no problem with that, and I've been consistent on whether it's an examination of the origins of COVID or even, you know, Hunter Biden's influence over his father, that I think that whoever is in charge is more than welcome to have congressional hearings on this. But to Stephen's point, it can't just be grandstanding. The American public will absolutely turn it off literally and figuratively, if this is just about people trying to, you know, get in a zinger so they can get a cable news hit, it can't just be by 10 o'clock. And that's unfortunately what on this. You can absolutely guarantee the faces that you are going to see on TV at night, the night that X big thing happens, and they're crisscrossing in terms of what their messages are. And I think that it's just a really sad state of affairs for the country yeah. and the whole, to your question that you posed as we went to the panel about hero or villain. We don't share heroes or villains anymore. I mean, there's so little that unifies us. Um, and I think that getting to the bottom of what happened in terms of a pandemic that did take over a million American lives should be one of those things. But when the continued demonization of Dr. Fauci is coming to the right, I certainly understand and can sympathize with the left who's going to kind of and gird their loins out it, if that's okay, the right phrase to use. Okay, but there's, there's a difference. Back. Okay, but there's a difference between the girding of loins and, you know, sainthood. Because I don't think he sure. deserves that. And I, I think there are mistakes here that, you know, it, it's interesting, Brad, because Dr. Fauci talks about, you know, this is all revisionist history. People who are critical of him, they're, they're revisionists. Well, what if history repeats itself? What if we haven't internalized enough of these lessons? What if we're damned to repeat this whole entire scenario again because of people's inability to be honest about what they know when they know it? Yeah, look, I think Dr. Fauci is the one engaging in revisionist history here. He says he didn't lock anybody down. That's technically true, but he advised people and put out the standards and recommendations that they then followed. And I've said from the beginning, Fauci was in an incredibly difficult position. When COVID struck, no one really saw it coming as one of the nation's top government health officials. Uh, and I don't envy him that. But I think his legacy will ultimately be one of dishonesty and a lack of transparency and error. He misled the public about masks. He admitted to misleading the public about herd immunity. He's been very, very dishonest and shifty on this question of gain of function research and the extent his agency uh, was involved in funding it in Wuhan. Uh, and then, you know, there's been a real arrogance to him this entire time. Uh, this idea that he thought they could recommend government solutions because they were the experts and nothing could go wrong. Well, the lockdowns had unintended consequences a million times over. From from you know, drug overdoses soaring to mass unemployment to domestic uh, abuse hotlines going going off the hook, ringing. I mean, these were all things that happened because of his hubris and this centrally planned solutions. Yeah. And I want a real accountability for that. Yeah, and even when he was pushed on the harm it's done to children, uh, he he brushed that off, which means he's been almost entirely unserious about the mental health and learning loss, uh, which are, are two great deficits that society can't afford now and certainly not in the future. Well, I have been wise to his nonsense from the beginning, but the liberal media has been kissing his ass for more than two years. Now that Fauci is on his goodbye tour, they're throwing roses at him like he's an opera singer. Watch. 
always pushing for science first in President Trump's White House, Fauci at times exasperated his face and hand. The doctor who guided the U.S. through the coronavirus pandemic and saved countless lives. There has never been anyone else like him, and there never will be again. He was sort of the face of the messaging as he was pushing uh, strategically and diplomatically against a president who often was pushing in the wrong direction. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that there, there are millions of human beings alive today who would not be alive if not for the work that Dr. Fauci did, coordinated, and led. Well, if killing beagles weren't bad enough, what would it take for the media to flip on Fauci now, Stephen? Nothing. They've, I mean, it's like you said, it's they've deified him enough to where I'm not surprised if every single one of these people I just heard in this clip have a Steve. Fauci candle above their bathroom room stall. Um, they really just looked at him as a foil for Donald Trump, and that was pretty much it. It's in whatever reflexively position Trump has to take, then Fauci would take the other one, and they have to jump in his corner, and that's really it. And again, with congressional hearings, no matter what comes out of that, they're just going to spin it away from him, and they're just going to say, hey, you know, whatever, and then we're all going to get to enjoy his, you know, citizen medal ceremony in Joe Biden's White House. Oh, God. Um, Alicia Menendez uh, signed Believe off it. the other night. Jessica saying, in Fauci we trust. I, I can't summon up enough bile to barf all over myself. That's so disgusting. Well, as someone who did begin the pandemic as a Cuomo sexual, I think that's what <laughs> this was all called. Yeah. I have to say that, that there was a, what? That didn't so, age well. No, no but not my finest it. crush. Yeah. I mean, he. Well, he still has an appeal, but obviously, you know, he did very bad things and he shouldn't be governor anymore. Yeah, don't give that face, Kennedy. You know he's got appeal. Anyway, no. um, it's very hard at moments of mass fear, which is what was going on when the COVID pandemic hit, to not look to people in positions of power and people who are especially doctors and have been studying these kinds of things for decades, who have gotten us through previous crises like Ebola, for instance, and to say, yeah, what that guy's saying makes sense to me, that I should stay inside when this is going on, or that I should wear a mask so that I'm not inhaling germs off of other people, and that is how it spread. The problem with basically everybody, and even Jerome Adams, who was the Surgeon General under President Trump and now has reversed his stance as well on masking, is that they didn't update us in an honest way by saying the science is evolving on this and we will do our very best to move along with it. There were just positions that were stuck to for far too long, and it left people, and that includes someone like me, who is, you know, a Democrat through and through, to have to question things for myself, like eating outside, mm -hmm. right, or wearing no mask outside. Or That's something that the science was pretty clear. Yeah, it was, it was also clear that kids weren't getting COVID, right. and they weren't transmitting it. And we had that science for a long time. And in Florida, they actually read the science and went, oh, no, we're going to let kids go back to school. We're going to let businesses open. And people went, oh, OK, you know what? I'm going to be safe and I'm going to open my business. I'm going to send my kid to school. And those kids are fine. And they have such a competitive advantage over kids in places like New York and California who were virtual shut-ins, especially, you know, kids, lower income families, single mom has to go work, has no choice, works at a grocery store, kids stuck at home, no laptops, no iPad. No Zoom in a room, no learning for them. Yeah, I guess uh, th that's, that's worth it. They'll, they'll probably rebound. And I, I wish the media were as skeptical as normal people are now, Brad. Yeah, I wish they were too, but they're going to be glowing and fawning over him. And my message is simple to the ladies and gays out there. Find you a man who will simp for you as hard as the mainstream media simps for Dr. <laughs> Fauci, who will be loyal to you, who will crush on you. Doesn't matter if you lie to them, if you're not honest with them, if you make mistakes, they will stick you with you through it in everything. And that's the mainstream media for Dr. Fauci. And I think to those of us looking for dedicated partners who will let us do whatever we want, maybe that's a good model, but it's not a great model when it comes to government officials wielding vast amounts of power over our entire country. Yeah, or public health. It's really interesting how uh, Rochelle Walensky, you know, who lied through her teeth throughout the whole thing and worked at the teachers unions, she gets hung out to dry and she's the one who's forced to be honest and go, yeah, we really screwed this whole thing up. Man, don't we suck? And Fab's like, I'm amazing. I'm the best.
best one ever. It's a character assassination to not say that my pre-narcissism is perfectly wonderful. What a hack.